Thanks to the Eternal Word Television Network, EWTN, and Telcom Media, we are now launching 24-7 Catholic Television in South Africa. The international programming provided by EWTN will be supplemented by local content provided by Catholic Studio. In recent decades, television has spearheaded a communications revolution which has profoundly affected family life. Today, television is a primary source of news, information and entertainment for countless families, shaping their attitudes and opinions, their values and patterns of behavior. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me. We're here to bring you something different, something most Catholics have never had the opportunity of watching before, that's Catholic television. Catholic television is unprecedented in South Africa. In fact, it is unprecedented in Africa. It is a mass evangelization project brought to you by an alliance of Catholic producers and better yet, it is launching this year, 2008. Our studio is run by a small multidiscipline core team of editors and producers. Our studio acts as a hub for Catholic television and new media producers in South Africa who are commonly inspired to help contribute towards the creation of Catholic content for our local Catholic TV channel. Networking helps facilitate a pooling of resources amongst producers and thus the more effective production of media projects for television. We also invite talented Catholics from around the country to become content providers for the channel. We need representatives in all the major centres, dioceses, provinces and religious congregations to get their creative juices flowing and then to submit material to become part of this grassroots project. While our faith is Catholic, our context is South Africa. So we draw from the rich cultural diversity and we go to lengths to bring you our country's beautiful missions and liturgical celebrations. that run into the night and a vibrant faith that touches the heart. Our land's Catholic tradition is characterized by thriving sodalities, movements and communities. The mission of the sodality, I would say, is that Christ wants my heart to spread his love. It goes with the motto which says, penance, worship, and holiness. Our magazine programming features inspirational stories of ordinary Catholics and the practical issues that they face. With youth and children's programming there is something for the whole family.
We are called to be the face of Christ to the poor and the afflicted. We document the pioneering work of the church as it deals with the social issues of our times. In the beginning, you know, it sounded a bit funny because uh, when we spoke about AIDS, people misinterpreted it uh, and said so many funny things about it. I remember, you know, young people when we spoke about AIDS, they used to laugh. And uh, we had this doctor from DRC, Dr. Mark Taratibu. I remember him saying to us, you know, here in South Africa, at the moment, you are sowing the seeds of AIDS. Ten years to come, you'll be reaping. Responding to the call of the gospel to live the Beatitudes, the laity are playing a vital role in fulfilling the mandate to serve those most in need. Ruel's mother also had a baby boy in the morning of April 7th, 1993, but she held her son and she looked into his eyes and I'm sure that she cried. And then she took a newspaper and a plastic bag, wrapped them like a blanket around her son, stuck him in a stormwater drain in Soweto and walked away. Perhaps minutes, perhaps hours later, someone walking past heard the earth wailing. Imagine the thoughts that went through their mind as they knelt down on the ground and carefully put their hands inside that dark and smelly drain. They pulled Ruel out of the darkness and took him to the hospital. Joshua and Ruel came home after three weeks and uh, we committed ourselves to giving these abandoned princes of Africa the life that they were meant to have living together as twins, as princes, and as number six and seven of the Java's siblings. Ten years ago when I looked at those boys, they were two years old. And I thought, wow, you know, we've got some gems here. And now it's ten years later and I'm still 100% convinced that by the time these boys are in their twenties, people are going to look at them and the nation's going to look at them and say, this is the breed of people that we need. People who are colorblind, who have respect for women and children, who have no fear to say what's on their minds and in their hearts. And, and people who know who they are so steadfastly that even with political pressure and even with social pressure and media pressure, that they still remain true to the fact that they were chosen and destined to be great. And, and our children, I believe, will one day really represent the face of South Africa to the world as something to be proud of. We need to see living examples of faith in action. For this reason, we present the often untold stories of Catholics, both past and present, living the call to holiness. Pilgrim, poet, mystic, and friend of lepers, John Bradburn was all of these as he went about his work at the leper colony of Mutemwe, Zimbabwe. Bradburn, one of Africa's remarkable eccentrics, was murdered in 1979 during the Rhodesian Bush War. His love for the lepers at Mutemwa had proved too much for darker forces that wished to exploit these outcasts from society. Faith seeks understanding and needs to be nurtured by our spirituality. We help you along this journey by providing you with seeds of wisdom from accomplished speakers from the world over. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Deacon Harold Burke Sivers and Today we're going to be speaking about the Liturgy of the Hours, or the Divine Office, the official public prayer uh, of the Church outside of the Liturgy of the Eucharist, the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. So the, the yearning of God is no more war, division, hatred, and oppression. See, God is like a mother. He wants all the children to love each other. And you know, as I do, that to break through our cultural patterns, to break through our habits, to break through those places of security, we need a new power. The culture of life versus the culture of death. The theology of the body and having a look at a deep philosophical understanding of how God made us as male and female with fertile and infertile times. When covering life issues, 
were encouraged by Pope John Paul II's teaching on the culture of life and thus are encouraged to defend the unborn. My heart is I'm longing to see your face With tears of laughter I sing praises to your name Vocations form the lifeblood of the church and ensure its continuation. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. It's all very well to want to do it, to, to feel cold and to want to try a vacation. But uh, a lot of sacrifices are asked of us, particularly in Africa. It's not the normal thing for girls to enter and not have family or get married. It's a sacrifice they have to make. We are not alienated from the world. We are really concerned to what happened outside. And uh, that's why when we get up for adoration at night, we have adoration the whole day long, day and night. So we just remember before the Blessed Sacrament all the sufferings of the people, all those who are dying with AIDS or are abandoned or have no one to take care of them, all those who live in sin and don't care. So we carry all those sufferings with us and we present them to the Lord. Our message, which counters the culture of death, which is so prominent in popular culture, is the message of chastity, which will bring about the moral renewal of our youth so that they can have life in abundance. Well, Love Matters is, is one of the programs uh, which, is, which is teaching in a, uh, sexuality in, in a positive way um, and in an integral way. Well, I guess you could say I've always been a romantic when it comes to love. And I believe that when you're entering into marriage, there's only one thing that you can give to one person once in your life, and that would be your virginity. And I think that that's something, if you are going to spend the rest of your life with someone, that's the best present that you could possibly give them. If you are willing to marry someone, you're willing to wait and you want to enter into a life of living together after you're married, if you're entering into a marriage thinking that divorce is an option, then you shouldn't be entering into the marriage in the first place. Children need faith content to foster a relationship with the Father, and our captivating content makes learning fun. We need your help to bring this message of faith, love and hope to the people of our land. If you think you can help us, please call us. Yeah.